We're now joined by Ross Chastain, driver of the number one for track house racing, the Chevrolet. We're going to go ahead and open up for questions. Jordan over there. Jordan Bianca, KB Athletic. Um, a lot of talk this week about drafting and teammates and how you support one another. I'm curious, within track house, is there a conversation that needs to be had about, you know, hey, if Daniel needs help, you're going to have to be there for him or anything like that? I'm there for my amigo all the time, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've already had those conversations. We had them with GM and Chevrolet, and we know the bigger picture of, of, um, of the bow tie and what's important. And... Um, yeah, we can do a lot of we can do a lot of good and for the one car and and help you know people where we can and um, tomorrow night will be a key moment to do that. When was the uh, conversations with GM and uh, what was said in there? Uh, Monday and just uh, just getting it right together just to talk um, and uh, and just you know hear what people's um, plans are and and philosophies. Um, right, there's a million ways you can go about this race. Um, and I think, well, for, I know for me, I can't speak for any, anybody else, but my mind kind of like sways with the wind on what I think is going to work, uh, because you look at statistics and you look at the history of it and it, you can read it like one way or you can read it the complete 180, um, of what's successful here. So, um, yeah, just, just getting us all in a room and, um, hearing everybody out right here in the front. Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. So all of that aside, you know, trying to get Daniel in, that's super important. On the other hand, it's a win at Daytona. Um, you of all people know how much one point could matter come November or October as well. So how much do you try to balance the needs for the entire organization, but also kind of your personal ambitions too? Personally, I'm in Darlington <laughs> already. I mean, I hate to, I don't hate to say it because it's the truth. Um, you know, we, we've put effort in and we have a, a car that we think can go, can go be competitive and we'll, we'll play the race out as it comes. But, um, I've, I've learned to not come here with any grand plan. Um, yes, if there's a stage point, if there's a win, go for it. Um, but I plan on being, I said it before, I plan on being backwards in the grass at 200 miles an hour. And if I don't hit anything too hard and I can get back to pit road with minimal damage to the bottom of the car, I'll still have a shot to win. So, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't get upset when stuff happens at these places anymore. I used to be so on edge through the truck series. And then, uh, I heard an old veteran say that, and it made a lot of sense and it made my weeks leading up to these races a lot easier. And, uh, so, you know, mentally I've already started, we've already been fully preparing for Darlington. And then lastly, um, I feel like as both a fan and now as a driver, all you've really known is the current playoff format or a, a chase for the championship. So you probably don't think about how things used to be because that really didn't apply to you. How do you feel about being a part of this kind of pressure cooker playoff year after year? Do you, do you enjoy that? I, I actually do think about that because I was a fan and I did you know follow the points whenever it was five points per position and, and season-long points. Um, and, and you got points for leading laps and you got all and you know, this other stuff. Um, and, and this is the last week. It's very easy to look at the points and see that we've fallen from within or being the points leader earlier in, earlier in the year, we're over a hundred points out now. I don't think with 11 races to go, we would have a realistic shot to go win a championship. So I love it. I mean, it gives us a real shot. It gives somebody like Chase who's missed races a shot, Alex, right? Like guys that are, we're hundred, are hundreds of points back and have missed races would never have been in contention. So um, I love it because um, it, it allows for um, allows for me to have a shot. I, I've had the points lead. We've lost it. We've given up over 100 points, and um, we wouldn't have a shot without it. We're going to go to Jeff back there and then to Holly and then to Lee here in the front. Ross, in three and a half months, you have, I think, one top five and three top tens. Obviously, for the playoffs, that's not going to be enough, as you know. So what's your level of confidence that you guys can pick it up from here and start getting better results in the playoffs? My one team and 
driving the race cars. Uh, yeah, I, I see the stats. We look at it. We've we've looked at it um, with with GM this just this week of just how how the season's laid out compared to last year, and it's just a very glaring thing when you click on finishing position. Uh, but there's a lot more to be said for average running position, um, and I'm not finishing where we're running. Um, you know, the pace can be argued um, was better last year, but uh, running position was similar. So there's a lot of things and details you can dig into and see, and we just did that this week, and it honestly made me feel okay because I know where we can be better, and I know that I can be better at finishing these races, and um, I I, I, <laughs> I got to tell you, I was a lot more nervous sitting up here last time I was at this desk announcing our multi-year contract extension and new contract than I am right now going into the playoffs, which is a really cool feeling. Um, those were nerves and pressure for another reason of just getting it out and, and one of the worst kept secrets, second worst kept secret, I guess we've had this year. Um, but I have, I had, I had more pressure sitting up here then than I do now with Darlington, Kansas, Bristol coming up this month. Go to Holly here in the front, then Lee. Hi Ross, Holly Kane with the NASCAR wire service. You kind of alluded to this a little bit, but do you, what are you expecting out of the race? Because there are so many people that need a win, that can get that win. Is there more strategy involved than normal, or do you expect it to be, um, you know, as Daytona often <laughs> is? Uh, you know, what, what are your realistic expectations of this race, and is it different from the Daytona 500 because it sets the playoff field? Well, I think Ricky was just up here. He'd argue that it set his playoff field in February, so and he got a day, he won the Daytona 500. So um, that is uh, nothing to to not look at um, in, coming here in February, and it's a great reminder for everybody that you can just set your season to a basically a permanent win for the year if you win the Daytona 500. That's lifetime achievement, like Ricky was able to accomplish. Um, but here, what do I expect? Lee? Yeah, I expect all of it. Like, I expect everything, all the highlights that we're going to see, all the highlights we know. Um, you know, I don't expect a ton of cars to be running at the end. would probably be the only thing I could really confidently say I expect. Everything else is I could expect all of it. Um, and then for me, I can only control my, my variables that I can, you know, directly control. So that's saving fuel. That's getting on and off pit road correctly. Um, staying with my group that we pit with the best I can, staying in the pit stall long enough while Brooke, our gas man, fuels the car and we get the right amount of fuel in it each stop so that we don't have to take more fuel later. Um, those are the things that I can control. After a decade in NASCAR, you had a breakout season at the top level last year. What did you learn going through each of the, the playoff rounds um, you know, and getting all the way as far as you did in the playoffs that you can take with you this season? Yeah, a lot. I learned a lot. Uh, learned a lot about myself and, and our group at Trackhouse because there was, I had questions of could we step up? Um, there was some similar comments to what Jeff said last year about, you know, some stats that were looking a little lower. Um, and we went to we went to those races to Darlington and we were fast and we, we did what we needed to do. We kept air in the tires at the Texas race where everybody was blowing tires. And like my group did everything right to not blow a tire. We weren't the fastest car, but we did the things we needed to do to, to survive and advance, survive and advance. Um, that's no different now. I can't let, you know, the Nashville win, um, or, or everything that's happened since the playoffs last year affect the fact that I just know we have to go week by week and then the Roval haunts me. I mean, that, that wreck partway through that race um, should have taken us out. And we were, by some gift, given another chance, and we took full advantage of it in that, in that round of eight. Um, so minimizing those mistakes. Um, we did so good those other nine races, and the Roval stands out as the one, and I got away with it. Um, but we'll, um, yeah, all that, all that plays into account, and... Um, there's a corner I won't crash at at the Roval this year. I have worked really hard. I'm not saying it won't happen, but turn two at the Roval. I should go slow enough through there this year that we don't crash because that, that could have been really bad. And you said you already had your, you were already focused on Darlington. 
I bet after Darlington this spring, you had a lot of sleepless nights. And so what did you learn from that experience and how will you approach racing at Darlington moving forward different? Well, what happened in the spring caused me not to win and I don't like to lose. So I'm not going to do that again, but I'm still going to go race. And Larson and I have had some great battles this year. Um, we were side by side a couple of times late in the race last week at Watkins Glen. And then at the end of the race, it wasn't me that was running into everybody at the end. It was, I was watching it in my camera laughing, uh, the rear view camera. 